Hello there everybody, this is Alex from Hardcoin Guides, bringing my guide for Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 on Master Ninja Difficulty. Today we're doing Chapter 17, Poison Blood. This is the final and last chapter of Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2. Of course, I believe that in the original game there was only 14 chapters probably? Something like that, I'm not even sure because I'm pretty sure the girls were added to Sigma. I think Rachel was the same way with the first game. I think she was just like an added thing to it. But anyway, so... Yeah, um, this is a sort of both lengthy and not kind of thing. It's mostly just a boss rush type thing, but there is going to be a few times where we're going to have to fight extra enemies. Starting off right off the bat, we have these four-legged spider creature things again, and just as typical, uh, UTs work great. Eclipse Scythe, also kind of nice. Gets us a good couple d limbs. And after that, I'm trying to remember if we have a fight or if we have... Another horde fight. I think it was another horde fight. It might have been. But yeah, also do be careful because some of them actually do spawn behind you. So keep that in mind. If you get too far in here, they will spawn behind you. I think they just do that anyway, but still though, just, you know, stand your toes. Be careful. Watch out. That type of stuff. Alright. Eventually they'll all die. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll get them. But this uh, chapter is unfortunate because you have to fight so many bosses. Not that they're bad, it's just Elizabeth exists, so that's a problem. Yeah, that's another, like, hour and a half of just doing nothing but Eclipse Sight through T's the entire time because I don't know any other good way of finding her, and that's just my own preference of doing it. Mainly because I suck. Luckily for us, we get um, a little shop we can go to, a little shop of horrors. At least that's what's coming up. Nothing but horror. Um, buy a talisman, of course, if you can. If you unless you already have one. If you don't have one, buy one if you have the money for it. If you don't, then, well, that's fine, too. Like, it's not like you really need it, but if you don't, if you can't buy it, just be more careful. Try to be a little bit more item conscious, essentially. Especially with this area out here. Which I think I actually end up losing my talisman, to be honest, like, in this fight, actually. I don't remember. No, okay, I just use a grain. All right. I mean, there's a shop right there. You can go back. You can you can get more items again. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. It's okay. So just, you know, end my thing. UT. Any UT works. Just constantly UT. Because that's what most of this game's going to end up being. It's just constant holding down the triangle button. Because, you know, it works the best. It's just how things work. Not that there's no other options. Oh, there it is. There's that funny little end my thing. Uh stick onto the wall and then press square or triangle or whatever it was to jump back off to a sort of like flying swallow technique even though it doesn't really cut but you know hey works for what it is I don't even know why they changed the name of the weapon though I mean Lunar Staff is still the same so I don't know why they kept that but they changed this one to a new weapon maybe they just wanted to redesign it I don't know that could be the case also, you probably noticed, like, in, like, I think the last chapter or the chapter before that, we got a new item, which I think was, uh, what do they call it, onigiris or whatever? I, I, ugh, I should know this one, being dumb. Basically, rice cake, so we, I, I think that's what it was. We have one of those, and essentially it just gives you full health. I don't think it gives you full nimble, though, so. Use it whenever you feel like it. If, uh, it's just an extra free item. Like, once you lose it, it's basically gone. I think we got it from Ione, actually, come to think of it. But yeah, once you use it, it's gone. It's it's okay. Also, to the left and right of us is, or at least basically underneath this bridge, are going to be some blood eels. And you're going to want to start whipping out whatever gun you can and just blasting them. I don't know why I bothered with the cannon when the bow works just a little bit better, but hey. It is what it is, right? So... Take the bat out as you see fit. Try to stay back here, at least from the entrance, so that way you don't get accidentally get grabbed. Because, like, once you start making your way over, you could potentially get grabbed, and it's just a pain, and it's not worth the trouble. And there is another little bit of a, a pool to the front of this bridge that's going to have a couple more in them, but I don't think those can actually come back here, as far as I'm aware. Also, I don't know if there's actually any items in the water. I didn't really bother checking. You know, it's funny, it's like, this probably isn't actually just water. It's probably not bloodstained water. It's actually probably, I think, just actual blood, like, poured in. But that's what Elizabeth drinks, is blood, so, yeah. Pretty cool, huh? 
It's also, I mean, I, I don't know. I always thought this part looked actually kind of cool, though. With all the with the bone bridge and the and the blood, like, lake type thing to it. I always thought it looked kind of neat. Kind of neat level design. For me, personally, that doesn't happen very often with Ninja Gaiden. Like, sometimes you get some really nice levels, and sometimes you just get some levels I just think look like shit, but... I don't know, that's just how I feel. But from this point on, um, oh, yeah, also, you can use, uh, Nimpo here, because there is some red essence up to, I think, the right of us. But on both sides of this door, there is something you can grab. Yeah, it was a left. Never mind, I got my directions mixed up. Oops. Well, not that, I just forgot which direction it was. If you wanted to use Nimpo, you could've. You get some Nimpo back, which is nice. Whip out Void, I guess. Inferno works too, but... Alright, so now we get to finally fight Genshin for the last and fourth time. Because, jeez almighty, he just doesn't stop. He gets harder in this fight, so he has fire attacks that do a little bit more damage. Even if you do block his charging attack that he does toward you, uh, you still will take chip damage from the fire itself. Just do the Azuna drop some crap. Even though you can't actually Azuna drop him fully, just do it. Mainly just to save some trouble. Yeah, you may take a few hits, and if you do have Talisman like I do, at least, you know, you can come back from it and survive for the most part. So, at least have a Talisman for either his fight or her fight, because Elizabeth shows right back up after this. And, like I said, just stick with doing Azuna Drop stuff. Because that way, at least for the most part, you stay in the air and you stay away from most of his attacks. And just, you know, kind of bait out, like, these types of attacks right there. That one you kind of want, you want him to do that, so at least then you could dodge it and then, you know, go for a couple of good hits. If he does hit you, oh well, he doesn't do too much damage. The worst he can do is grab you. And that's what we don't want, obviously. So, again, if you do happen to use a talisman for this, that's fine. If you use items, that's fine. Uh, as Because, like, Elizabeth isn't really much of a pain in the ass. She's just annoying to fight because she just takes forever to deal with did I not use a talisman on Genshin then? Maybe it was a different death I had, probably. Oh, I think that's it. Okay, well, Genshin's dead. Oh, damn time. I'm just wondering when, the, you know, Genshin Impact itself will die. Oh, just kidding. Haha, just kidding. Haha, am I really? Haha, wouldn't that be funny? So anyway, um, Elizabeth fight number, what, two, I think it is? Or three? I'm not keeping track anymore. Anyway, so... Keep her at medium distance. Charge up red UT with the Clip Scythe. Launch it. She does the same crap she always does. Uh, I don't think she gets anything new anyway. She's just the same stupid bitch as she was last time. There's also apparently a trick. Oh, that's right. She gets that move. Whenever she grabs you inside of that little thing that she pops up on the ground, uh, just hold the block button because once you get grabbed, she'll go for a dash thing and you can block it and then break out of it. Yeah, I know, it's pathetic, but that's just how it is. Don't worry about launching Nimbo too much. I only did it because I knew I had a Talisman. I just said, nah, screw it. If she gets hit by it, she gets hit by it, so whatever. The idea here is you want to bait out, once again, dash attacks. So that way you can get some nice um, cuts on her. The reason why I recommend staying medium distance from her, like at least a good distance like this, like two jumps away, is one, so that A, the dash can't hit you, B, um, her close attacks can't hit you, and C, at least, keeps her from trying to go into flying mode, which, when she's in flying mode, you can't really do anything to her. But yeah, there's a, there, apparently there's a small trick with Genshin's body, where you can actually just, I guess, hide over near him, and she can't go through him or something? I don't know if that's fixed, I don't know, I have no idea. Now, you saw there I died, and she got some blood back, but it's okay, because guess what I had, Talisman on hand. That's right, baby. I actually ended up not using the uh, the rice cake the entire time of this. I actually forgot I even had it. And I think it was in my uh, yeah, it was in my easy mode playthrough. I accidentally used it because I went to go use an item, and then I went over too far and used it. And I'm like, ah, oh, fudge! But then I was like, ah, oh, okay, it's easy mode. It's Elizabeth. Even though Elizabeth may be on easy mode, uh, most of the strats usually just end up being the same because she's just. She's got some bullshit where she just can't get hit, and I hate it. That's why I always use a clip scythe, because... Well, as you see, it sort of pays off. But yeah, if you have the patience for this, then... I mean, awesome. 
you know, if, if you don't, there's other ways of doing this. There are other strats, but for me personally, I have the patience to deal with it. I died, I don't know how many times. I died a lot. Let's just say that. I even died out of here. By the way, uh, real quick, I do want to say that after you kill Elizabeth, you get a checkpoint. So if you die out here, it's fine. I can guarantee your safety. However, if you're playing the original Ninja Guy 2, I don't know about that. So don't take my word on that one. Just don't die, I guess. But if you die on Sigma, you're fine. Yeah. Don't believe me? Try it yourself. See what happens. You won't die, I assure you. No, I mean, you won't have to fight Elizabeth again, I assure you. But yeah, that's actually one of the uh, few rare occurrences where they end up actually giving you a checkpoint of all things. Because typically they don't after boss fights. They just typically just say, uh, F you, you know, we don't care. That type of thing. Usually they give you checkpoints at the beginning of boss fights. Unless you're Momoji, and then you don't get a checkpoint at the beginning boss, because I guess not. Either they forgot to program it, or they just decided not to. Or they just assumed that the Tango brother himself wasn't much of a boss fight, even though he had a boss fight health bar. Who knows? Who cares? But yeah, same thing for this goes. You know, same toe to toe crap. You just a zero drop if you need to. UT if you need to. Go for the mages. Delim enemies so you can slow them down. I mean, it bears repeating every time because that's just how it, that's just the nature of this game. Because you know, people can come from any. People can look for any chapter, any video. Because some people like doing this stuff on their own. You know, not not everybody likes to to watch from the very beginning of the guide, so I gotta make sure that everyone's on the same page. Pretty much at all times. It's... It's the life of a guy who does guides. That's just how it is. So yeah, this may be a little too early to be talking about. I, I should say this for the end, but... I may or may not take a small break after this uh, guide is finished. At, at least with, you know recording and all that other fun stuff because man oh man commentary can be fun but i did like 10 in a row today and i just i want to get back to other things i want to try other things for now so but at least i'm practically done with this game so it might be a bit before i get on to the next game i'm gonna do which i technically don't have an idea of but i'll tell you the ideas that i do have but i don't know exactly what the next guy will be Holy shit. I apologize. I'm very tired, I guess. It's been a long day. It's only like 3.40. And it's already been a long day, I guess. I don't know. It's just how it is. Okay, so that's finally over with. Now we have to fight. I don't know his name, but let's just call him the Fiend Guy. So what's the trick with this fight? Simple. Dodge. And then charge Enma Fang UT. And then with the lightning, uh, your dodges give you iframes anyway, so it's no big deal. Constantly dodge. You're essentially waiting for him to come down off his high ass throne so you can hit him with a UT charge. Go for the fiends if you can, so that way you get the essence to drop. And then whenever you get a chance to charge, which after he does like a laser attack, that's a good time to charge at least a good charge. And then from there, just launch it. Try to hit um, any of the purple fiend guys if you can. And then whenever he comes down, you know, get the red UT charges and hit him. So he doesn't have a variety of attacks, really. He's actually relatively a pretty boring boss fight for what it is. Mainly because he doesn't really do much. I mean, and most of the time, you're just spending it kind of evading attacks. So whenever the purple guys do spawn, you could always just use Inferno just to get rid of all three at once if you wanted. That could work too. So usually after he does that lightning strike, he goes for like a three-hit combo. It's relatively kind of rare what the hell he's going to do next. Like Sometimes he'll do like that dash stab thing. Sometimes he'll do something else. But when he gets back on his little uh, tentacles, when he's kind of like sitting on his chair, I like to call it, 
Oh, that's a good ample time to start charging up something. So we get a, a free nice hit. Even if, even if he's doing the lightning strike, like right now, like look at that, you get out of it pretty easy. So, like yeah, I did a UT, but even then still, I had the iframe. I had the iframes just to escape. Get a few pop hits every once in a while if you can. That type of thing. Just keep dodging and yeah, like I said, it's, it's just a super boring fight because it's just kind of... It's just kind of, you know, duck and weave type things going on here. Duck and weave into a UT, which barely doesn't do enough damage to really quantify the idea that, you know, it's even worth doing. <laughs> but I mean, for me personally, it's the safest option I have. I mean, by the way, I, I want to say the Emma's Fang Level 3 looks really nice. It's got this weird, like, guitar look going for it, too. It looks kind of neat. There you go. There's my next guy. It's Brutal Legend. I'm just kidding. I've never actually beaten that game yet, so... Yeah, that's a... That certainly is a game. That's for sure. No, my next guy is either Rockman or Guitar Hero in Expert Mode. That's also one no-no. But yeah, by the fact that I'm not really talking that much... And the fact that um, I'm yawning so much, well, this is like my 10th commentary in a row by now at this point, so I'm kind of ready just to move on for the day and just be done with this crap. Still don't even know why I do this stuff. Uh, I don't know. Self. Self-achievement. You know, that kind of thing. I've explained it a million times before, but it's mostly just for me. Well, I mean... It's mostly just to calm the brain and say, like, hey, look, see, you achieved something in life, right? Look at that, you beat Ninja Gaiden. But, you know, at the end of the day, it helps people, so... Two thumbs up for that. I don't know if it actually is, but, you know, and plus, even if this guy doesn't really help anybody, um, hopefully it's entertaining. Right now, probably not, but for the most part, you know, I, I personally like watching people like Ninja Gaiden, so I think it'd be kind of neat if other people may have liked it. There you go, finally. God damn, it took forever. Speaking of taking forever, we're going to be speeding through most of this. So yes, this is the next fight, and we get a checkpoint. Thank goodness. What spawns here is just nothing but essence. I don't know why. My guess is maybe there's a chance of ghost fish spawning. That's probably my only thing I can think of. There's no point in having Essence because there's no shop to go to. I I don't know. I don't know. I'm guessing Ghostfish. If I could stop yawning for five fucking minutes. God. Alright, so. Here's the trick with this fight. Shoot him in the face. This crystal metal glows. Shoot him, in the, shoot him in the body. Every time you shoot him in the head or you shoot him in the body, uh, he drops these limbs of blood on you. He spits them up. Dodge, like, do like dodge jump, like, once or twice. Get away. There you go. After this, uh, he's going to whip his tail, and you can actually block it if you wanted. If you feel comfortable with dodging, that also works, but you can fully block this thing. And here comes the speed up. Rinse, repeat, like five different times. There's some blue essence there. Sometimes they drop items. It all depends on the chest. Here we go, all right. Now my computer's gonna scream at me because God forbid it has to do anything work related. The laser attack, easy to dodge, does a lot of damage. He does have another attack that he can do, but he does it like somewhat near like the upper floors of this and what he ends up doing is, like, I think he does, like, a grab attack, but it doesn't really happen to, like, when you get him, like, way up high. At least that's what happened to me, though, so I don't know if he can do it at any time at all, but, yeah. All right, there we go. Do the same thing again. Shoot him in the face. Shoot him in the chest a couple of times. Sometimes you can get a couple of shots. Sometimes you can't. At least if you get one, that's great, because that chest shot with that orb does more damage. You are doing damage to his head, yes, but... For the most part, it's the uh, orb thing that you're focusing on. After that, climb up here once again, get a crane, nice and easy, shoot him in the face, shoot him in the chest, he's still glowing, I get a secondary uh, shot, it's nice. I don't think it matters if you use bow or cannon, I don't know if they have really much of difference in damage in this fight, I don't care enough. Do whatever you feel comfortable with, of course. 
as always. So, next up, block or dodge. Then we're going to speed up and we're going to climb up once again for the second to last wave of his health. I think it's the second to last. I'm pretty sure it is. We're getting pretty damn close, though. Yeah, do be careful when you're coming up here, though, because once you see his arm, like, swing around, he can't actually, I think, grab you and do, like, an insta-kill. Bullshit. It's either an insta-kill or it's enough to almost kill you. And I remember dying a couple, like, once to this guy. This boss is not hard. It's just that he's got some stuff that just hits hard. He's just super slow, and you can pretty much just get him in like a stun lock type thing like with this, so yeah. He's not even really the true final boss anyway. It's the next guy. Even then, the, the actual full-on true final boss isn't even really that hard. I died like two or three times to him, and then after that, nothing. Elizabeth is like the only thing I can think of that's relatively remotely hard in this chapter. Even then, still, uh, Eclipse Scythe, you know, just good amount of patience, good amount of alcohol on standby, and you're pretty much alright. Okay. If you haven't fallen asleep yet, <laughs> um, just, yeah, just shoot him. I don't know. What else, is, what else is there to say? It's just the same thing. Dodge, shoot. Dodge, shoot. Like, I like fighting the boss. I don't have a problem with it. It's just, like, watching it in terms of, like, video-wise, it's like, oh, my God, get on with it. <laughs> you know? I could have sped it up, but I figured I'd leave it just as is, just in case anybody really needed that much help. You never know. All right, so fun little trick. Stick to the to his right hand, which is on your left side. Stick to his left hand and just do triangle attacks. There you go. He has a laser shot. If you can give him the laser, that's great. If he goes for a grab, that sucks. But he usually only grabs on, like, on one side. If he goes for a grab, just dodge it. Um, like right there. So, yeah, if he goes for that grab, that sucks ass, but that happens. Usually when you're on the left side of this, he'll do, like, that smash attack. Just jump, dodge, that kind of thing. Get away from it. Don't get grabbed, because you'll get dead. Oh, wow, there we go. Talisman. See what happens when you get grabbed? There you go. Proof of purchase that I've been playing on Master Ninja Mode for those that were, you know, probably saying in the comments like, Oh my god, you're not playing Master Ninja Mode. You're not doing, an, you're not taking that much damage. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever bullshit you come up with. There you go. I don't know what other proof I can give you besides I died in one fucking grab. And if you were that, if you think I may have stole these videos and used them for my own, that's great too because I didn't. This is all authentic, baby. No matter how much I say that, I'm sure that somebody out there is probably thinking, like, all this was shit and fake and, you know, I, I stole it from somewhere else. Whatever the case. That happens on YouTube, so that's just the nature. There you go. Stick to his right hand. Hit it. If you get lucky, he'll do nothing but laser shots. He'll die. Fantastic. Great final boss. Better than the one that wasn't won. I mean, well, to be fair, kind of a little bit easier than the one of than what was in one because for the most part I mean yeah with well, the one in one you just use items this guy you don't even really have to use items you just you just hit him in the hand and he's dead so yeah that's it that's everything that's Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 Master Ninja Mode so I don't have a lot of like really crazy parting words to say besides I don't know it's it's a fun game. I mean, it's a pretty good difficulty mode. I wish that maybe they changed the enemy spawns to at least have more harder enemies instead of just the same enemies you fight in every other difficulty mode. But other than that, it's a fine mode. Uh, in terms of actual overall difficulty out of 10, I'd say 7, 8, something like that. Like 7 or 8, it's one of those two. I don't know. I'd, I'd even give South Park 1, but for South Park, I gave it like, I think, a 3 out of 10. It's okay. For this game, um, is it harder than Ninja Gaiden 1? I mean, in some areas, mostly the bosses. But other than that, no. I think Ninja Gaiden 1 is a little bit, just a tad bit harder because it's a little bit more archaic. This game, no. 
Um, the worst part of this game at all, I'd say, is probably just Elizabeth in general. But even then, you just gotta be patient. I mean, granted, there's also the fire armadillo, but as you saw, he didn't do his roll attack because I somehow got him not to do that, which is great. But yeah, for those that have probably skipped to the end and you want me to shut the hell up and explain what the hell the next guy is because you're impatient and you're waiting. I don't know exactly. I want to take a little bit of a break right now and just do something else for a little bit. I'm sorry. It was, this was a long game, guys. This was a long one. It took me like a good week or two just to even freaking finish all this crap. I'm still going, too. So, yeah. Uh, I have... Here's what I have in mind. At some point that I would like to do. The Ouija's Mansion 3, A rank. There's no hidden mansion difficulty, which sucks ass, but... A rank, you know, uh, fuck it, why not? Who cares, right? That could potentially be the next one if I'm still in the mood for it. Um, at some point, I would like to do God of War 2. I'd like to get back into God of War, but God of, every time I do God of War 2, I get bored of doing it. I, I don't know. It's just one of those. I have considered maybe X-Men Origins Wolverine because I actually like that game, and I haven't played it in a good while, so that'd be kind of a fun one to do. There's that. There's also maybe the potential DMC4 at some point. I've just... I was in the mood for it last time, but now I'm kind of, like, not really in the mood for it, so I don't know. Uh, I thought about doing a Batman Arkham Asylum no damage perfect stealth run. Maybe no upgrades as well. I that's That's been considered. I've also considered doing Bioshock Survivor Novita Chambers no damage run as well. That's been considered. I mean, I've considered, I don't know how many guys but after doing this one i feel tired i feel worn out so i kind of just want to go back to my life and just ignore this for just a little bit of time okay just saying uh what i come back with is what i come back with I i'd say it's probably one of those maybe no more heroes i have no idea yet i i'd say if anything maybe look forward to either batman x-men origins or luigi's mansion 3 those are the three i can think of that i would probably come back and do so, yeah, I, I have nothing else to say besides this game, it's intimidating, it's not hard. Not very, okay, it's hard, it's not very hard. It, it certainly wasn't as hard as I was actually expecting it to be. There's, there's a lot of quirks, and once you figure out those kinks, everything comes crumbling down, and Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 becomes... Well, less than what I thought it was. Basically, Ninja Gaiden 2, Sigma Mode, is like growing up and thinking your dad is like the coolest guy ever. Like, you know, you just think like, oh man, you know, my dad's like a superhero. He's like the coolest dude. He's so tough. He can break buildings. And then you finally grow up and you realize that your dad's just a big fat piece of slobbing shit that just smokes, drinks beer all day, has a fucking fat ass, you know belly going on huge dad bod and shit shits his pants you know pisses his pants comes in his pants all sorts of things you realize that wait a minute he's not as cool as i thought i mean okay ninja gaiden 2 is cool like it's a good game i'm not saying that i'm just saying that in terms of difficulty yeah it's in terms of okay if i had to put it in terms of an erect penis it's probably like a sort of semi-flaccid hard erect penis where like ninja gaiden one is kind of like a little bit of like it, it's more than a chub like it's a little bit more than a semi but it's not like oh my god this is like super erect i mean it, it's basically like what mine is where it doesn't get fully erect ever anymore because i have you know basically ed at this point but i can still come you know what i'm saying like it's almost erect. It can still kind of come. But you just kind of don't feel it. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. Yeah. It's almost there, but not quite. So, 7 or 8. I don't know. A fucking 7 out of 10 difficulty. It's, I mean, come on. Most of this can be cheesed. Most of it's just UTs and OTs. That kind of crap. But yeah, I better shut up before I make this an hour-long video on accident. So, See you guys uh, whenever I get back to whatever guide I do next. So, as always, take care, everybody.